Hey, Evan. It's Evan. I just thought I'd give you a shout. I just wanted to talk to you. Everything's cool. I just wanted to say hi, you know, voice to voice. How you doing? You know, um, I'm really appreciating what you, what you're doing with, uh, with this project of the podcast and everything. I'm sure you're, like you said, juggling a whole bunch of things all at once with mixing your band and everything like that, and having lots of stuff to do. And I know you work and everything like that. So it's, a lot of good stuff you're keeping busy, but I, uh, I'm just really, really proud of you, and I'm very uh, supportive. And I just, yeah, I'm really, really, really curious, and I'm so excited to to see what 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 you guys, have, what you have done, what you you've worked on. You, you folks have done such a great interview, and and it, the audio is fucking killer. The the visual with the audio is just going to be fucking five thousand billion percent rock and roll fucking shine on you crazy diamond shit you know evan c tadpole jones goes to fucking heaven you know from evan to evan thank you very much hey all to who's ever listening to this this is evan thomas catalano I started this podcast this is only the second episode with my friend from australia matt granlin we recorded this interview only weeks before the sudden passing of evan so this now stands as a tribute to his incredible life i've been friends with evan c tadpole jones for about 10 years we've been talking back and forth and kind of pen pals and whatnot and he was always a really good guy big heart and he uh started well was one of the founding members of one of my favorite bands of all time snfu i was also friends with kenny chin chai pig and uh this also goes out to kenny chin chai pig they were dear friends as you'll hear in this episode which we recorded on march 28th 2021 um evan Rest in peace, you'll be dearly missed, my friend. I'm really glad, at least, that we got all these laughs and uh, amazing stories and chats that we had in the following. So thanks, everyone, for listening. Condolences, rest in peace. And I, I rest in peace, Chai, too. I love you both, and I hope you're up there having a time playing some music together and all that stuff. Okay, enjoy. Hello everyone out there, welcome to another episode by Shock Collar Records. This is the Shocked and Stranded podcast with your host Evan and Matt. And we're going to be talking to a, a, another punk rock legend today, actually. This is going way back to the 80s, like, once again. This is one of the original SNFU members and founders. His name is Evan C. Tadpole Jones, and he's from Edmonton, Alberta. And he is the original drummer from SNFU. Thanks for being here today, Evan, and good to have you on the show. Stooges. Be your dog. Now I want to be your dog. So come on. Woo. Okay, there. Right on, man. Hi, yeah. Evan. Hello, Matt. How you doing, brother? Good, thank you. I'm glad you can join us. Well, it's it's my my pleasure to still be around, at least on this planet Earth, with you, man. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. We've got to count yeah. our blessings these days. Yeah, it's it's ridiculous. So yeah, no. Hey, we're still happening. We got Evan C. Tadpole Jones, legendary uh, original SNFU founding member of the band and musician, artist, and uh, all around great guy. And we're uh, going to talk to him today about punk rock, some history, and everything. So uh, thanks for being here today, Evan, and uh, Evan from Evan. <laughs> it's good talking <laughs> with you, man. How are you doing? Yeah, yeah. Evan from Evan to Evan, Evan from Evan, Evan from Heaven to Evan from. Evan, number seven. Hey, let's rock and roll. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good deal, man. Rock and roll. Nice to meet you guys. So, Evan, you're calling down the line from Edmonton, right? You're, yeah. You're, are you born and bred and lived there your whole life? Yeah, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm home, sitting in the basement with the the the, the incense and the candles going, and the, and the med- medication <laughs> is happening. You know. I'm curious about your first musical influences. You started really young in bands. Uh, yeah. Did you come from a musical family there in Edmonton? Yes, I did. Yeah, my father actually was a, a musician. He actually played drums, and I actually was playing um, hall shows here in 
the 19, well, late 1940s, early 50s here in Alberta, playing like hall shows and stuff like that with uh, country bands and uh, stuff like that. So, you know, it was it was pretty interesting, I would say. And then my mom was a wonderful singer, beautiful, beautiful pianist. And uh, my sisters, I got two older sisters, one that played lots of piano and, and uh, the other one played lots of guitar. That's the one that I used to borrow the guitar from. <laughs> and that's what I learned when I was like about, you know, five, six years old, I'd be leaning over with peanut butter and jelly on my hands and then playing her guitar and trying it out, you know. And uh, yeah, now I learned to uh, hand on foot, man. Just beautiful family. I, you know, my dad passed away when I was, was five years old. I had an older brother. Uh, he passed away. It, he drowned in the North Saskatchewan River when he was five years old. I never met him. That was in 1959. So I'm the, I'm the only living jones boy in this family and I, i'm not married don't have any kids so i'm the last one left man <laughs> so yeah and uh was it the urban surface was that your first real real band there in edmonton like as a going concern um, uh in a certain way the, the urban surfers were one of one of the first bands um i would say they were they were the they were the first real band that started playing professional shows and i was well i was 14 and that was in 1980. But before that, in 1977, when I was like 12 years old, uh, I was playing, oh no, I was 11 years old, shit, weird. Uh, I was 11 years old, I was born in 66, so yeah. I was 11 years old and I was playing with a band here in town with a guy named uh, Daryl Goaty, and he was a professional uh, musician and he, he put together some people that were talented enough to be able to play in a bloody band you know and just we played rock and roll you know and just straightforward rock and roll stuff and uh it was older guitar player older bass player older and then he played some keyboards and stuff so and i was like i was like like i said 11 years old and i was playing with these guys but i was a good drummer at that time and then i took a year off in in 78 and then 79 i met a guy named dale muscalic and uh, a fellow by the name of Jim Aljay. He's also na- known as Jungle Jim and also Blake Cheetah. He went off and played in uh, the Asexuals and stuff like that years ago from Montreal and stuff. Um, but uh, we called ourselves the Uncolas, not just another pop band. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> and, and, yeah, we, o- we only played two gigs, in, and that was in 79 and then uh, eighty bass player and I stuck together, the guitar player left, and uh, we formed, as you were saying, the band The Urban Surfers, and that was with a fellow named Al Miller. Great singer, great guitar player, man. Like, and he was, he's an older dude, and he, he could really rip on the guitar. And uh, so we had, yeah, we were like the house band for like uh, pot shows and stuff like that here in town, where it was like the big smoke-in gigs and stuff like that for free the weed type stuff. And we were the house band for them, and uh, played in front of uh, the the wonderful uh, the rebels and stuff like that. Came to our shows and stuff, and it was it was cool. It was good times. And then uh, to make it short, I'll just move it right to the next band, and then you can we can yak about <laughs> the old snafu shit. <laughs> because yeah. it just sort of it just sort of goes bop 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 bop, you know. But when you're that young, man, I tell you, brother, it's like it. I just I had nothing to lose. And only everything to gain. I was then 14. Then uh, Jungle Jim left the band. And it was just me and Al Miller. So we got a guy by uh, the name of Ken McKay. And he used to play with a band called the Rock and Roll Bitches here in Edmonton, which were a pretty good damn band. And uh, we formed a band called the Reverb Angels. And that was around for a bit. I quit the band. I needed to still hang out with my buddies like Warren Bidlock and and Guido and Ken Chin and, uh, you know, stuff like that and, 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 and get drunk and listen to more punk rock, you know? <laughs> you know so, and then that's what happened is in 81, like, me and Warren and Guido started hanging out and practicing in uh, the, the Belke Brothers' basement with, uh, and that was Mark Belke, Brent Belke, Kenny Chin and uh, me, uh, Warren Bidlock and Guido, which his name is Anthony, Anthony Fumes. And there was another guy named uh, Woody. He was a very good, nice, nice guy named Jim, but uh, he always brought some good weed. But we'd sit around practicing and uh, playing stuff, uh, uh, I don't know, 
we were playing stuff like Circle Jerk, the early stuff that we were playing. Like I said, like in the early days, we were playing like Devo, whatever, you know, in, in 79. But like, then we started moving on what was happening, you know, and we were pushing it like even faster and faster. I was already opening up by myself with Urban Surfers. But yeah, I opened up for DOA when I was like 14 years old in 1980 with the Urban Surfers. Just to get wow. back to your... Just to get back to your original question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Holy, holy fuck. What, what the hell am I doing, right? What spaceship am I on, right? right yeah. Man, so Evan, uh, yeah, that's amazing, man. I, I I love how you just get into it. For anyone out there who's listening, Evan here, I've known Evan here for like 10 years. We've been chatting away. But I still I still have questions that I that I never really asked you. Like, I mean... You know, like, obviously you were in the Edmonton scene at a really early age, but I was wondering, like, how in specific did you, like, get into punk rock music? I mean, I know it's awesome and everything, but how did you get into yeah. it? Yeah, how, how I got, well, it was it was just a case of, you know, that, I mean, that was, that, I mean, I was, I was a crazy, hardcore, rebellious, you know, psycho, psychopathic youth, you know, I was very... Um, you know, I mean, I we all I mean, we all had shit lives, man. We all had r- tr- trouble in school. We all had, you know, fucking, you know, girlfriends breaking up with us because we didn't have the right fucking haircut, or or we we had too many too too much too many zits on our face, and you know, so I'd go and I'd go and carve an X on my forehead and shave my head, you know, <laughs> you know, you know what I mean. I yeah, I just yeah. I just I just I just never. Feet seem to fit in, so I I lost I left school at the grade grade seven I got grade grade seven education, and uh, went off and played in in fucking bands, and yeah. the case of punk rock well to me punk rock is everything, everything that you see in here I mean I don't want to label anything because for me everything is really based on the extremes of our life and the extremes of humanity and the, the the extremes of how far you can push yourself and how deep you can go in to some certain holes where you have to bloody well claw yourself out of. And I've been down many, many different types of avenues where I, I, I am surprised that I'm still alive. And so, yeah, I, I punk rock to me was listening to some really good stuff. The early days for me of rock and roll were the Beatles when I was a kid, uh, beating on pots and pans and wooden spoons. Me too, and, man. Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of yeah. crazy, hey? Yeah. Two it's Evans a real deal. that both started drums early, got into yeah. punk rock later, and were <laughs> kind of Beatles yeah. fanatics at a year early age yeah. because my parents had Beatles records all over. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. And they were into music. Anyways, yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah. That's my, awesome, my, old, my older sisters were yeah. kind of like hippies and, you know, sort of witches and hippies. It's and weird. Stuff, I have right? two so, older sisters too. What the hell, man? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're, see, we're possessed, man. You know, the universe. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, so, but yeah, it's a, yeah. it's a, yeah, it's a mirrored in the universe for sure. But we're, uh, you know, we're a freak show uh, for sure. But yeah, as far as punk rock, Beatles were for sure. Hey, eh? like, uh, yeah, I had two older sisters and that, that was, that was number one for me. I, I just went, yeah, boom. And, uh, and then I started getting into like, you know, a whole bunch of other stuff. You know, I got into Zeppelin and of course, Hendrix and, you know, and, uh, Black Sabbath. And then I, I was really, really into then later. I mean, I obviously as a kid, you know, in the seventies, I was right into like Alice Cooper and, you know, and some of the early stuff was, was kind of not as availably pushed out here in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Like, let's say, you know, like Iggy Pop and the Stooges type thing. Or, or like the New York Dolls, you wouldn't be like finding that on the top shelf at your record store. You'd, no, you'd have to go looking for that shit, right? But that's the kind of stuff that I really did get into. And uh, I love the Stooges and, and uh, MC5 and all that shit. But it's like, yeah, anything that's intense and fierce and 100%. I used to, and then years later, the punk rock shit that was coming out, like out of, let's say, England and shit, like a uh, band like, uh, like Discharge. Holy shit, we would listen to that and go... This is like the punk rock version of Black Sabbath, you know. So we we started getting into that, and we always wanted to play as hard and as fast and faster and louder, and just go. Let's just see what we can do, and that was the mindset. That's what we did. And do you recall, Evan, a moment in time when you really felt the magic of SNFU in particular? I mean, it sounds like historically you guys shot up to prominence pretty quick in the punk scene, and people took notice. 
Yeah, we. Uh, I, I would say that we were we were the original, really only true hardcore first hardcore thrash punk rock band out of Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. But you know, Canabier. <laughs> no, we we're the first Edmonton. <laughs> the first first uh, original hardcore punk rock thrash band out of Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, and I'm very proud of that. And we did push it real fast, real hard, and and anybody because we were thri- we were striving and thriving to find any other bands to be put on the bill to at least make a show worthwhile to at least open up for us for fuck's sake. And then some bands started, you know, putting together and coming together, and that was great. And that's how things work in every. You know, society in every city and every place. Or, hey, but man, or, uh, society's no yeah. fucking use. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, every scene, every scene, <laughs> and, right? And I was going to ask, though, too, I know... It, What's that? Like, who exactly came up with that band name? How did that happen? The name? Yeah. Oh, I, I think... And honestly, the logo. The zombie, I think... Well, Kenny... Uh, Ken Chin, he, he found that in an old, like, uh, creep show magazine or something. You know, one of those old, old comic mags or something like that and he thought wow yeah right on and we thought yeah per- pretty cool right open your mouth and say bah, you know that's yeah. <laughs> you know, we all thought fucking right that's so gonna look great as a you know put it on we all like uh put it on shirts and on our on our underwear and uh and, and then we we put it on the back of back of our leather jackets at least kenny and i did the other guys didn't i don't know kenny and i were were a little bit closer than the rest of them but uh i don't know it was it was fun uh, that's what, yeah, but Ken came out with the zombie one. But the other one it was just a cut because he was good at doing lots of cartoon stuff, and he was doing gig posters and shit like that. Before he was in SNFU, he actually did the first gig poster for a show that I was playing in another band, like like the Urban Surfers opening up for DOA in 1980, and he did the poster for it. and And it says at the bottom, "Poster by." Ken Ken Chin, and it's like wow. it's like yeah, and it's a picture of of uh, Ronald Reagan holding a a, a Rickenbacker guitar and <laughs> it's a DOA live in Edmonton <laughs> and live from Beer Can Beach, uh, the 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 Urban Surfers, you know. So, anyways, it was yeah. it was pretty fun. But the the original logo was uh, S N, and then the old uh, skull and crossbones, and then F U. And that's what we used originally for for many years. Well, many years. What am I talking about? The first the first two years, so eighty one, eighty two, eighty three, and then maybe late eighty three, early eighty four. Then the the zombie kicked in with the open your mouth and say with the zombie. So yeah, that's wonderful. I mean, you, if you think about it, man. I mean, this year would have been our fortieth anniversary. Okay, no, of no. SNFU would have been 40 fucking years old this year. And I believe in my heart, yeah, I believe in my heart that Kenny and myself maybe get Mark and Brent together and have Jimmy Schmitz, us original five guys, for even if it was just for one fucking show to get up and play even just like a handful of fucking songs. That would have been dynamite, man. Like I would have, I would have done it because I did ten years ago in 2011. I did the 30th anniversary show of SNFU with Kenny. I was the only original member that went, and I played here in Edmonton at the uh, Starlight Club. Uh, it was a sold out show, and. Uh, SNFU management called me up and uh, said, "Hey, do you want to come by and then hang out and and do like a one-off, do like a swan song song, <laughs> swan song song? Try and say that a few times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a swan a swan songs. Oh fuck, I'm not going to say it again. Anyways, yeah, a swan. <laughs> it's got me. It's got me going, man. Anyways." But, but did you want to come out and play a song, on, you know, at the end of the show? Uh, Kenny would love to see you. And the rest of the guys in the band would like to meet you and all that shit. I was like, fucking, yeah, I'll be there. So, boom, VIP went in. Yeah, hey, and it was great to see Kenny, man. Yeah, we hugged it out, man, and talked 
fucking laughing and talking and it was like that was beautiful man so i it was like me and him were 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 we're friends back in the day we were brothers we were bandmates we were close man i mean we're the type that went out for pizza together and went to movies together and drank beer together outside of the band uh, the other guys in the band i didn't hang out with like jimmy or mark or brent no way but me and ken we we're we we're brothers man and i love him i love him forever man you know he's 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 my bro, and I uh, I'm so proud of him of where he took this bloody band SNFU after I started it with him, and he I left, you know, back after doing the first album I, I, I it, and then it was released in '85 and man I tell you I was I was so in and out of of, of consciousness <laughs> I was in and out of having some really rough times in my head and the lifestyle was pretty rough. I mean, I was doing every drug you could imagine, and I was doing way too much LSD, and uh, I was shooting up everything and snorting this and snorting that, and I just smoking this and drinking my ass off. And so I was, I mean, I was the youngest of the band, and I was ready to fucking die, man, right over, you know. So they said to me, Evan, let's have a, a one-on-one, let's have a band meeting, you know, let's let's go to church here and sit sit in the room, and we we sat together in our in, our, in the house after a band practice, and we visited and let, let's get what's going on. And I needed to hear it because they all all brought it up. Said, "Man, we care about you. We love you." This is personal, really hardcore, in depth shit. But this is what happened. They said, "We love you. You're our brother, but we don't know what's happening with you. Like you're you're not really even around anymore. Like we don't know if you're even sitting here right now. Like are you okay?" And I was kind of like, wow, you know, okay. Uh, I, and it start, started hitting me. Like, they said, listen, you know, if you want to come on tour, that would be great. But are are you able to? And and maybe when maybe you need to take some time out, like like Brian Wilson type thing or a Sid Barrett type thing, and uh, take some time out. And if you get better, then you can come back in the band because you're, you're, the, you're our drummer, man. You're our brother. You come back to the band when you feel better. But... We don't want to go on tour and have you come back in a body bag. And I said, oh, fuck. So, I mean, there were some tears that were shed, some hugs and some fucking holy fuck. So we made a decision. I said, yeah, I need some time out. I was just too, too lost. It took me about two more years after Hollywood to sort of learn how to speak properly again, right? I'm sitting here now talking with you, but I'm the real deal, man. And, and Hollywood was, was where that first album was recorded, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate you opening up like that. Uh, you know, that brought a picture and I saw it all in my head just right now in that moment. So thank you. For thank that. you. Thank well, you. absolutely. Yeah. Well, it means a lot, the world to me, uh, this band means so much to me, uh, from the thens and the nows, they're still in my heart. I am still the original fucking goddamn drummer of SNFU, Evan C. Tad Bull Jones. I still meet nice people. I like being able to bump into people and on the street and, you know, people still have me signing stuff on the street and then they want to take pictures. And I was like, I never knew of anything like that back in the day. Cause you know, you're like an outlaw, you're an outcast type thing. You're a, you're, you're a shit, you're a shit heel. You're a fucking punk rocker. You know, you're, you're nobody. But then, you know, all of a sudden now people are saying, you're, no, I'm so fucking proud to meet you and I'm, i've never heard that before and they say yeah you, you mean the reason why i'm playing drums is because of you man you know i was like, what wow that just warms my heart blows my mind so yeah it really does man it's just like I, i'm so very grateful and so very very passionately like happy to know so many wonderful people that 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 are inspired and 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 that have actually done something in this world that makes some people think wow man that that, uh, that first spoken album man you know for me personally i mean I, it's like that's great to hear now obviously but i wish it was mixed a little bit better but anyways <clears throat> um but yeah no I, it's it's just nice to be that in this world that's all right there's no complaints while we were on that topic i had another question about you know when yeah. you saw ken aka yeah. chai pig during that 30th anniversary show i had a yeah. question about like what was it like to be on stage with him again uh, and have it, you it, seen him much in between then and the departure from the band originally i 
bumped into him probably maybe a couple of times over like let's say what would that be maybe 25 years between yeah something like that i i I bumped into him a couple of times here and there and it, it always hurt not him but always hurt me being out of the band and walking through town and seeing a poster on a wall with my old band name written on it and that I'm supposed to be playing somewhere. In my head, I'm supposed to be playing somewhere this weekend. It's like, holy fuck, no, Evan. And I have to go slap, bang, you know, crap, boom. No, you're not playing this one, man. Come on, Jones, keep walking, keep walking, keep walking. You're not in that band anymore, boy. Yeah, it made me it made me cry. I'd go into a deep, dark depression every single fucking time they came through town because I couldn't face that I was out of the band because of my own psycho schizophrenia, super super califragilistic expiala fucking docious. You know, I was I was my own great escape. I was I was pretty pretty far out and it took me years and and every time though i would see a gig poster walking down the street just to go get a cup of coffee somewhere and i go holy fuck or see something in the newspaper i'd be like just fucking crying every fucking time for like 25 years man so when i got together with him just me and kenny for the originals on the stage and the other uh, uh other four whatever three guys um uh john card was playing with them again but uh yeah no uh, the other three dudes that were playing at the time in uh 2011 but when it was me and him playing we did uh cannibal cafe and uh the crowd went fucking ape shit and kenny god bless him he stood on top of the drum platform pretty well almost the whole time and like he was like like waving at me and clapping his hands and looking at the crowd and saying, look at this man, you know, look, this is the deal, man. This is the real deal we got here. You know, my brother, you know, and I fucking, I've got a video of that. And it's like that, uh, yeah, that warms my heart every single second of every day that I think that that actually happened. And it was, it was a blessing in so many ways that he and I got to, got to be together again on stage once and for all, and that was the last time, and so, it, but it was meant to be, and I, yeah, I dearly, dearly regard that as a very huge, momentous uh, period of time in this universe, for sure. <laughs> Hey! 
Well, thanks, Evan. And I'm wondering, in the years since uh, you did leave the band originally, what what, what other Im- involvements you've had in music in the Edmonton scene? And I know you've recorded some of your own tunes as well. Yeah, I uh, well, I've 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 get carried on doing my own recordings, and I've I, in my life I've actually recorded. Um, uh, with some various people and done some different things, but uh, uh, mostly solo things. And uh, I've never really stepped out like trying to promote myself as you know, look at me, I'm Sandra D. <laughs> you know, no, no, I, I, <laughs> one, one, two, three, ho, 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 blah, 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 yeah, that's the life. I no, I never really promoted myself. I just I did some recordings and in my life I've probably recorded over four hundred and seventy five songs I counted that are recorded. Yeah, so that's yeah. pretty impressive by my own standards. I'm thinking, well, that's pretty far out, you know. You sent me that C D uh it must have been ten years ago, definitely now. That was back yeah. in twenty eleven. Of your solo music, which yeah. I really enjoyed. I still have the C D, but I wanted to play a couple on this podcast, the song A Flood which is great, yes. but then there was that other one, the first song that you put on that CD. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. We yeah. were just listening to that, actually. Oh, and, wow, yeah. yeah cause I, but I don't have the titles on my computer. Oh, cause when I, I think that, yeah, there's a few different ones. I, there's a few different songs I wrote, and I recorded those, like 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 I said, a couple of years after I quit S, or left SNFU. I pretty well just, I was trying to come back to life, right? Uh, like I said, it took me like, two years to learn how to sort of speak normally again somehow, remember my name and sort of talk. And But I was recording, yeah. And um, I mean, I, a huge influence in my life of uh, beautiful, beautiful music that was helping me out was some really in-depth uh, Pink Floyd music that I was that I was a huge fan of. And I still am. And it's like, uh, you know, I've, some people, are, like they've said, I've sort of been like the the Sid Baird of the punk rock Edmonton scene, you know, d- disappeared. And when people saw me years, ago, like through over the years, they went, fuck, I seen a ghost. Holy shit. And it's like now, no, I'm, I'm not a ghost, but now I'm open and I'm open to say hello to people. And it's taken years, but it's like, wow, man, I'm, I'm, I'm open. But yeah, those solo albums, I, I started recording in like 86, 87, and some of the early songs, yeah, were like, um, I have lots for you. And this song is one of your original songs that you did shortly after your departure from SNFU. And it's it's really original. It's uh, it's sounding a little, a little psychedelic, but really your own thing. And this song is called I Have Lots for You. And yeah. Yeah, and is there anything you want to say about it? Yeah, uh, I Have Lots for You is, is more or less maybe myself looking deeply into the mirror of my own self and trying to regain myself and that it was hard work to find myself and uh somehow i i did in certain ways and and i've still been battling that ever since i i i i i do suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder 100 percent from too much drug abuse and uh, the rock and roll lifestyle of what i did as a young teenage boy in this universe um but yes i have lots for you is 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 about me looking in the mirror Please, please, please. 
And visual arts too, Evan. You've you've involved yourself in in in, uh, in in visual arts too. Yes, yeah, yeah. I've always I've always loved um, I've always loved expressionism. Just uh, painting, um, doing abstract. My visuals are inside uh, come out in certain ways that are obviously fragmented in pieces of, as you say, is psychedelia, but it's like, I mean, I've, I've zoned into the oneness of third eye uh, center, you know, uh, mandala's center of the universe type thing, and almost like the blueprints of life type stuff. And I've been there and I've done it and I've seen it and I am. <laughs> and I love to paint. And uh, yeah, I used to paint with an electric drill and I was doing some really far out stuff and I was having some art shows a few years back and uh, yeah, I sold a few. I was, I'd never done anything. I'll just make this clear. I've never done anything for money. I'm not stupid. I'll take the money. <laughs> but I never did it for the reason of money. I needed money, but... I never did it for money. I did it because I loved playing music and I loved painting and I loved my artwork. And so anything I've ever done, I've usually given paintings to people or I've given my recordings to people or poetry or anything. I, uh, but, I but I did actually, yeah, it's, it was interesting. For me, I found it very interesting to meet some very nice old artistic hippies of the misfits here that were beautiful, wonderful old uh, artisans that shared the same, not exactly the same, but, but, but the same, but we all got along. We are all misfits, and we all found that same culture of the art scene was just like the old punk scene. We, we, we were misfits. We didn't fit in anywhere. So we would have art shows, and uh, yeah, I... I really enjoyed the people that I, I loved the people that I was with. And I did that for a few years here and um, was, was shocked, actually. And I'm saying that very truly and, and personally. I, I was shocked to sell any of my art because I've never, I, ne- I always found it hard to put a price to a piece of work that I did, you know? Like to put a number on something that you love. I, I can't do that, man. I, I can't do that, you know. I totally Money. understand, too. And yeah. Like, I mean, I, I can't thank you enough, Evan, for uh, sending me the painting you did after oh. after Kenny's Chai's passing. Yeah. And uh, it's right above the SNFU flag that I got. Yeah. And All good. I, and, What's that? And, I, you know, I, I just got this canvas out that I found last year a pretty nice one too and i got all these paints and charcoals and some graphite and i was i was gonna do one up for you in return because you know that oh, meant a lot to me so i just wanted to throw that, that out there to you that would be beautiful and i would i would i would appreciate that and cherish it and love it to death man that would be that would be fucking awesome oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah one, yeah, one heaven to another yeah that's cool oh that's cool sure. man no i always i appreciate your kindness and your decency, no matter what, man, you're, you're always a decent guy. And uh, I, I, for, and I'll say this, I'll, I'll mention this on your program here, because I don't want it to just be me, me, me. But, hey, listen, 
I've I've watched some really amazing stuff that Evan Thomas Catalano has done with Kenny Chin Chai Pig at the help that he has given every time that he's gone into Vancouver with his acoustic guitar or electric and has played either with the band SNV or played with Kenny. I mean Chai Pig. He did amazing acoustic work side by side with Kenny and I think Kenny just loved it because I, I see the I see the pictures on YouTube of of you guys and I'm like wow like Kenny's having a blast and you're you're smiling and you're playing your ass off man and I love it I think that those were some of the golden last years of Kenny being able to still go out on a stage do his acoustic sets with you I mean that's that shines brighter than any fucking diamond that I could ever see, man. Thank you that so really, much for that. Hey, yeah, that, hey, it's getting me a little some, emotional here. But like, well, I, I loved yeah, him, well, and uh, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm, I was listening to SNFU since I got into punk when I was a kid, yeah. like ten or eleven years old. And SNFU yeah. was one of those first bands because you know Canadian and everything. And I remember yeah. getting you know the the first album and uh, as much as I could get because I loved this band. And I I actually and t- uh, when I finally moved to Vancouver when I was like you know nineteen or. 18 or 19 whatever it was and then a couple years down the road when i was uh, i must have been 21 when i met him outside of pup 340 there because i was working a couple blocks away and uh some guy at, at the work was like hey come to the open mic down at pub 340 that i'm doing you should come play because i know you play guitar and i right. go down there and uh to pub 340 and i uh, i never really hung out there too much but i i, I guess i was around there gas town quite a bit sometimes yep. and then so we started going to this open mic every wednesday and i i knew this girl that worked there and we ended up dating tia actually we were, we were still good friends to this day and so we're uh we're hanging out there and i guess this this guy in this leather jacket who kind of looks yeah. almost homeless is one of her yeah. regulars right and, yep. Yep. and i'm like oh, okay who's this guy You're like everyone calls him chai and i'm like and i at this point <laughs> I've, I've listened to this and you and been a fan for 10 years but i didn't yeah. know what anyone from snfu looked like because i hadn't right, been right. to a show yet right, and i hadn't right. seen any music videos or anything so i'm like standing outside smoking a cigarette with her and then he comes out and he's like and he's smoking a cigarette and me and her are chatting away kind of and then he's yeah. like kind of he listening in on us and like kind of saying random jokes to us and like kind of fucking <laughs> yeah. with us a little bit yeah. i'm like who is this guy and he's like oh that's just chai i'm like chai yeah. and he's You're like chai. she's who like the fuck is what? holy yeah. shit and no so, way yeah and so she was just, together yeah, yeah. And, and then he's like i sing you know because i like he's like that was a good plan i sing you know and she's like yeah what are you some singer in some fucking rock band or something <laughs> and she's like and he's like only for 30 fucking years and i'm like what band what band are you and he's like s and f fucking you yeah, i'm like yeah, wait yeah. wait well what you're from you're no, like you're an SNFU man. I'm the singer. You're the singer. You sung all those songs to me ten years ago. <laughs> I was like mind blowing. I'm like, dude, we gotta play yeah. some songs. And then we just became yeah. like, we just kind of clicked. And I like kept going there even more because because like then suddenly my girlfriend's working there and he's yeah. there and I'm like fucking like holy shit. Like, yeah. man, like, I love your music, and, like, yeah, yeah and he's, you know, he's, he's a hilarious, he was a hilarious guy, and, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. heart of gold no. and everything, yeah. and, like, funny, yeah. and, like, but, you know, just, uh, well, yeah. It was, meant to, it was meant to be, man, I tell you, that, you're, <laughs> yeah. and, and the, and the weird thing is, is, okay, and I, I'm not gonna get all kind of, like, psycho here or nothing, but, yeah, hey, why not, you hey, know, but, dude, <laughs> but on, no, honestly, I'll say this. I think truly deep down inside, he probably had a fucking lovely, lovely, deep kick to be able to be on a stage with another dude again named Evan. Now I'm saying that pretty weird, that, but I'm talk I'm talking I'm talking real, man. I'm talking real, yeah. okay? You could because be right, him and I were very, very fucking close. I'm not talking about like we were dating, right? <laughs> but, yeah. But no, yeah. we were. No, we were. We were brothers, man. We were brothers. Well, I felt the same and, way about him too, because like yeah. we ended up being really close. And then, yeah. as you know, because I'd tell you about our my trips like to Van when I was living with yeah. Van, my time with him, yeah. and you know, like yeah, yeah, and he, yeah, and you know, he, yeah. he always spoke. He always spoke fondly of you, like. Yeah. yeah, even though. It, well, I remember the. I remember one thing you said to me about him. That I, I asked you. I said, "What? What does Kenny say about me?" And you said to me that he says, "Well, what do I remember?" He says, "You said," and it sticks in my heart because it 
means a lot to him. Right now, I'm looking at a picture of him right now while I'm sitting in my basement, and I'm looking at Kenny, and I'm going, and yeah, you said to me, he said about me that that Evan Jones has a very kind spirit. I remember you said that, and that, that just, that fucking, that, I, just something simple. That's all I need, man, is something simple to hear from loved ones like that, just to hear something. And that was the last thing that I remember that that was the last thing that was sent to me from anybody about his word about me was from you. And that meant a lot. He's he's still in my heart, and he still keeps everybody uh, alive, and I'm amazed at how many people. It hasn't even been a year yet since his passing, and the world has just opened up their love for this man. And I tell you, man, I I love him very, very much, and I'll always be his brother, and I'll always be his bandmate. And we shouldn't you know. forget that his influence yeah. and the band has spread globally too because I, I'm yeah. from Australia and I recall yeah. in 1997, I believe, seeing SNFU at my university with Bad Religion and that was oh. mind-blowing for me. Yeah. And I never oh. would have thought that a decade or so later that yeah. I would meet Evan here. And oh. I, I, I lived in Vancouver myself. I went to Pub 340. I saw Chai around the downtown east side a lot. Yeah. Became a fan. You know, so it, it's global too. It's um, Yeah. 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 It's, it is quite a journey. And that's what I wanted to say is I'm, I'm so damn proud of what I started with him and Jimmy Schmidt and the Belky Boys. But what we started together... I'm so proud of that. And, but more than that, is I'm so very fucking proud of where Kenny Chai Pig Chin took the fucking SNFU name around the world globally, like you say. And that just blows my fucking mind. I mean, I've never been to Poland. I've never been to France. I've never been to Germany. I've never been to fucking Japan. I've never been to, you know. He has, and he's been a few times, and he's toured, and he's played. I'm thinking, God bless him, man, that tiny little sweetheart, psychopathic genius. I tell you, he just kicks my ass and rocks my world. He's, he has blown my mind, and I'm so proud of him. Kenny, I love you. I'm proud of you. Yeah. about 
what a crazy ass punk rock dangerous band can end up being very very emotionally real and very strong and very found found foundationized with the gift of giving and that's what we still are is a band that is still around people i see it tattooed on people see the t-shirts and i walk around i'm, I'm very proud to see that and it, i i'm i am i am evan c tadpole jones forever yeah well we do appreciate you joining yeah. us today evan uh, oh from, i love you yeah i love you nice to, it's nice talking with you man Hey, you too, man. Love you too, man. It's all nothing but love here. Yeah. And hey, like, uh, yeah. I had a quick question about this. I was always wondering too. Yeah, anything. How, how did you get the Tadpole nickname anyways? Oh, see, that that was, you know what? Yeah. It's weird. See, we're, we're, we're flying in the same vibe because I was just about to say, oh. let's not let's not leave that one out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cause that's, I was always cause wondering that, about that one too. Okay, that's, that's, a, that's a big hit. That's a wonderful story, and nobody knows what the fuck I'm talking. Why? Why do they call him Tadpole? What the fuck is that shit? Why is he named Tadpole? Okay. Well, here's listeners the deal. out here, you have it. Let's hear okay. how the Tadpole name came about. Okay, here it is from the Tadpole himself. Okay, when we were on tour with the Dead Kennedys in 1984, and so we were touring with them, and. I was, again, I don't want to keep saying this, but again, I was off on my own. I would go to dime stores when we were on tour. I'd go to dime stores and pick up things like little scarves and stuff and weird things. And, you know, and for like, a you know, 25 cents, you go, you know, for a groovy a bandana or something, you know, or a psychedelic scarf or something. And there's one I thought, oh, this is groovy. I like that. Yeah, and I picked it up. So I was sitting on the sidewalk looking at this bandana. At the time, I was... I dropped a few tabs of acid, and so I was like, "This is before the show." <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I never, yeah, I, I, I can't believe it. Playing live like that was pretty weird because, like, seemed like oceans of golden waves of of symbols in front of me, oh, no. and I did, I didn't know where I was, and I, you know, I kept some time, but oh wow, you know, it's, no, I, I, I did my job. I kicked ass. I did my tour. I did my uh, tour of duty, and uh, but anyways, but when I was on tour with the Dead Kennedys, I was sitting on the curb outside in the in the in the evening, and there was a line around the block of kids waiting to get into the show. I'm looking up at this theater, and there, my name is up in lights, <laughs> you know, and I'm sitting there look, I'm I'm sitting there on this curb looking at this fucking groovy groovy scarf with all these little tiny beautiful paisley designs all over it. I love paisley designs okay these little guys were so beautiful i still got that scarf by the way i still have it i still have it and uh it's hanging in my in my my museum here but it's, yeah it's it's a uh, but it's it's got it these little these little paisleys all of a sudden started just swimming together and swimming so beautifully beautiful colors all entwined all like in the same choreographed, you know, beautiful one-step dance of oneness. And I was like, that is so beautiful. I want to be like one of these little beautiful tadpoles and not like this <laughs> yeah. and not like this lineup of kids around the block <laughs> waiting to see me play. <laughs> I want to be one of I want to be one of these little guys, not one of them. So I wrote tadpole on the back of my leather jacket and then I tied that scarf around my uh, my wrist and uh, went into the show and I was hanging out backstage with uh, the DKs and uh, the rest of the guys of SNFU and uh, yeah, I went and played the show. And uh, later on at the after party stuff, people are coming to me going, hey, Tadpole, how are you doing? I'm going, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> and they say, because it was written on my back of my jacket. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I was going, whoa, oh, man. People, I'm heavy. Everybody's reading my fucking, my journey. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm so fluent. I'm like, I'm like, I can see through everything and they can see through me. Holy fuck. I am the tadpole. Oh my fucking God. Is this real? Wow. Is it real? I am. I am. And next thing you know, I looked at my leather jacket and went, oh fuck. Oh, that's why. Okay, cool. And next thing you know, 
when they put out the album, uh, they said, what do you want your name to be? Well, I said, well, my name is Evan. My middle initial is C for Christopher. And then uh, they said, well, do you want Tadpole? I said, well, fuck, why not, man? Okay, well, they said, okay, Evan, C, Tadpole, and in, in, in brackets, and then Jones, famous Jones, yeah. I'm a Jones and for Jones. Both my parents are Joneses from Wales. So Evan, C, Tadpole, Jones, there you go. Paisley, loving, free spirit, one <laughs> beautiful yeah, yeah good storyteller it, too by the way it, man I, it, it's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> you put a vision in my head and i think matt's too probably yeah there, there you go well, <laughs> I, hey, it's only rock and roll will be like it man. there's gotta you be know, a movie yeah. on your life someday man i swear to god well hell yeah you know i mean I'm, if i'm still alive man you know i mean i would love i would love to to be able to have somebody explore some more and and i'd be wide open to be able to do more as i've told evan thomas there i mean i tell you man i've shared info okay brothers i've i've said i've tried to have people write like about five or six different books about me and it's just kind of weird because they i think it they can't handle it they stop because they just can't i'm not being a jerk but it's like they can't handle the truth it's like it's too far out maybe for them and to try and put it like from, if you're a good writer, you'd be able to have this journey pretty good, right? I would imagine you'd be able to write it pretty far out. Like if you're a good writer, you could you could you could do a good job on this one, on this this little this little guy here. <laughs> you could you could do a good job on this little crazy guy. Well, I'm but, not but, much of a writer, if that's what you're saying, but I like but doing no, filmmaking. No, no. Well, yeah. hey, there you go. Well, yeah, c- come and do the journey. Let's do it. And you wrote and some it, of the first music for yeah, the wrote, first album, wrote, the song Money Matters. I wrote that song, yeah. Yeah, Ken wrote the words, I wrote the music. And, uh, but at the, at the beginning, I wrote, I, wrote the, uh, I wrote about half the music uh, at, at the beginning of the band. I wrote, uh, and then half the lyrics, some of that. I wrote, I wrote, yeah, I mean, I wrote half the stuff because the Belkies didn't know how to really tune their guitars yet. Okay, I'm being honest here. I'm not being a jerk towards anybody whatsoever. I don't want to be that man. I don't want to be nasty. No, no. <laughs> you know, um, I can be. I just don't want to be. <laughs> you know, I've learned to be better. Yeah. No. Um. But Mark and Brent, no, they did not tune their guitars yet, and uh, and Jimmy was just sort of starting out again, playing his bass. He wasn't all that, you know, too great. But he was all. He was okay. But I mean, I'd rather be with a new band and doing something like that than to play with some guys that were older that were wanting to play slowed down sort of like when I left uh, the, the Reverb Angels and then I had nobody and I was like hanging out with Warren Bidlock and Guido and uh, but yeah no uh, I, I I wrote you're right I did write about half of the uh, first early SNFU shit and uh, and then a lot of it that never uh was put on records except for that 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 one song and isn't that funny money matters holy fuck (laughs) hey listen to this yeah (laughs) nice Oh, 
we should dig into some early SNFU, like how you were saying the the crazy hardcore days of the oh. you know when you, in your time in it when you were touring and the kind of shenanigans yeah, that well, happened. And Matt had an actual <laughs> question, a particular question from back to that time. Actually, well, is it true, Evan, that you and Ken had actually a, a bit of a fist fight uh, scuffle <laughs> and and some um, beer bottle was smashed over somebody's head? Oh yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. No, there's been times where we, there's a few fights that happened between a whole bunch of us. You know, different, different times. Not, not, not anything too dramatic, but it was, yeah, it was, it was all right. It was like, oh, um, well, let's say, like, okay, there's been times where we were out and on the road, and uh, you know, the van breaks down, and uh, then all of a sudden you get like a, a roadie, you know, who's, who knows a thing or two about the the engine. Then you got a uh, bass player who thinks he knows the thing or two about the engine. And then they throw it all out there. We're all sitting in there going, oh, fuck, where's, where's, has anybody got a joint? You know, it's like, <laughs> damn, what are we going to do? You know, you know, does anybody have any beer left? You know, it's like, <laughs> and then, and the next thing you know, you're, next thing you know, they're like, you see, oh, what the hell's going on? Next, you know, they're like, boom, bash, boom, <laughs> just fist fighting. Bang, 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 and then we just go. Well, just wait until it stops, and then they come in, sit down. Did you get it settled? Yeah, we're settled. Well, did you fix the engine? No. <laughs> 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 yeah. And uh, and there was a time though, but uh, yeah, there was a time. I mean, uh, yeah, Kenny and I. Um, yeah, it was funny. It was. It was. He was. He was a little little bastard. I tell you, sometimes it was just fucking hilarious. He. He go fucking like see back in the day. See now I look at it and laugh like no problem, man. Back in the day, it's like what the hell. And now we know that you know he has you know he found out that you know he has uh, uh, schizophrenia and uh, you know uh, double double personality complex situations in his in his life that uh, were were very obvious. But when you're young and you're you're hanging out and you're you're you know, you're together, you don't really come up with terms that these psychiatrists and stuff like that use. You just go, fuck, he's nuts. <laughs> you know, or fuck you, yeah. you're crazy. Or, or yeah, sure, you're, you're fine, everything's cool, let's go for a fucking beer, how are you doing? You know, and so, but yeah, there was one time we were going to play a show, and it was like, I think at a place called uh, the Eastwood Hall or something like that, here in Edmonton, and uh, we did sound check, and then uh, we're hanging out, and uh, there's like, you know, like usually at most halls, there's like some place around, you know, there's like a bit of a, a kids play, you know, a, a, you know play playground or whatever, and uh, so there's, you know, sand and dust and dirt, and we're all just sort of hanging out by the, the sand and uh, the playgrounds are sitting there having a few beers, you know, sort of wondering okay, when's the other band showing up, you know, to, that we're going to be playing with and stuff like that. And, and we're sitting there, and all of a sudden we're standing there, and I'm all, we're sitting there, standing there, sitting there, standing there. Anyways, and we're drinking beer, and, and Kenny starts, slowly starts to, and he just sort of, poof, he just kicks some sand at me. I'm like, oh, whatever, I'm thinking, I'm no, not no big <laughs> deal, I don't give a shit. And all of a sudden, he, he, then Kenny just sort of, poof, he kicks some more sand at me. I'm like, what the fuck? And I'm like, okay, you know, fucking. I'm looking at him, and he's just smiling. Just and, and he's looking, looking at, yeah, he's looking at me like, going, come on, come on, when are you gonna do it? Come on, come on, when are you gonna do it? Yeah. And I'm like, you little fucker! I'm just swear to God, I'm gonna kill you. And then, and then, <laughs> and, and he, then he starts, then he starts kicking like fucking sand at me, like poof, 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 like over and over, oh. like bam, and I'm like. Holy fuck, he's getting in my fucking eyes. And I'm like, God, I fucking, well, that's it. And I fucking, I grabbed him. I gra grabbed him by his leather jacket, by the collar. I grabbed him, I threw him. I'm like, you little motherfucker, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> and he goes, you go uh, straight ahead. Do it. Do it. Kill me now. <laughs> and I went, well, I'm going to fucking kill you, Ken. I'm going to fucking kill you. And then, and then he picks up a fucking beer bottle and goes, whoa, right across my fucking skull. Fucking so he did it to you? Yeah. Ah. Yeah. He fucking wow. smashed his fucking, smashed a fucking beer bottle across my skull and fucking blood <laughs> coming down my fucking face. I'm fucking glass everywhere and covered in beer and fucking... 
sand and beer. And Ken's just sitting there laughing. I'm going, you little fuck, man. And I'm fucking sitting there bleeding. Going, you know, what, the, what the hell was that now all that about? That sounds man? like true punk rock brothers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, no. And the, the next day, we went out for pizza. You know? Yeah. <laughs> we still played the we played no that doubt. show that night. And wow. the next day, we went out for pizza. Yeah, man. <laughs> Talk about bonding. Yeah, no, nah, we're 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 true we're true blue friends, man. We're yeah. true blood. Sounded man. like he just wanted to, you know, make make some excitement <laughs> before the show. He was a little bored, so he was like, "Come on, man! Come on, Joe! It's like fucking yeah. fight me, man! Yeah. Come on, yeah. let's have fun, oh, yeah. man! Oh yeah, never a dull oh, moment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I can yeah, just he... see it in my head too. I can see that. Oh whole yeah, scenario. you can see him. You can picture him. Yeah, you can picture yeah. him. You yeah. just, you know I how can he had that, definitely yeah. picture him. Yeah, just he just like how it was that, in that early interview too. Yeah, he had that he had that sideways look on him sometimes. He's like, uh huh. And he'd smile and smirk at you a little bit. And, you know, he'd look at you sideways like, uh huh. Yeah, yeah, uh huh. Yeah, and, uh, what do you think about this? <laughs> it reminds me of one time actually uh, at Pup Tree Forty when I was there one time, and it was kind of a dull moment until yeah. uh, this guy uh, brought him firecrackers out of nowhere, oh, and he's right like, on. "Evan, I got an idea!" And he grabbed this toy car that he had up above the shelf, like in a hidden right. place in in, in Pup Tree Forty. He's like, "Let's go have some fun." I'm like, oh, "Okay," shit. and we go outside, and uh, so we're we're rolling this car. We put firecrackers all over this little toy car, and. <laughs> <laughs> and we roll it down the street and light it and boom it <laughs> blow it up and there's people walking around they're like whoa what the fuck and he's like, we're just laughing our asses that's off awesome. and, you know that's that's the kind of guy that's he was awesome. you know you, you and kenny did that yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah but someone, some guy gave him a bunch of firecrackers so that, oh, yeah, yeah. that's a great idea yeah oh yeah, let's well, blow, yeah. hey let's yeah. blow this car yeah. up let's roll it down yeah. let's light of course. It, the firecracker well, of course. roll it down the hill and <laughs> Boom, boom, boom. People of walking course. around just, whoa. Of course. That's, yeah. I mean, what what else can you do, man? That's, that's, what, they're, that's what they're for, man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, I, that's, that's, rock, that's rock and roll, man. That's, yeah. <laughs> you know, that kaboom, rock, kaboom, yeah. you know. Yeah. Holy <laughs> shit. Good stuff, man. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, I... No, I like that's the thing. I mean, there was some there was some fights. There was there was a there was, a, there was one time there was a fist fight between me and uh, Jimmy Schmidt, and uh, oh. that that was kind of it was kind of nasty because it it wasn't really intentional. It was like it was a summer. Oh no, no, it was a winter. It was a winter evening, and we were hanging out, and there was like a, a party. So we weren't we weren't planned. So it was a party at some place, and it was in some old I don't know some place by here. Uh, uh, fuck, where is it? I don't know, by the railroad, railroad tracks. I don't know, it's some place. And uh, it was some bil- big building and uh, an old, old fucking place. And uh, it had like, in anyway, in Boyle Street, it was, a, it was a burned out old place. But there was parties where, so we hung out there and people were squatting there and whatever. Anyways, the party was there. My girlfriend was there. Uh, her her friend was dating Jimmy. And I was outside and, and she, I mean, she's a sweet girl. I'm not mentioning any names, but she was a sweet girl. My girlfriend was a wonderful, beautiful girl. I love her to this day and miss her very much. And uh, yeah, but what happened is uh, <laughs> Jimmy, he was inside. His girlfriend was outside, and I was sitting there with a whiskey bottle, sitting there up a just by myself. I was depressed. I was depressed, you know. I was sitting there. I was drinking, you know. I wasn't in the mood for partying, <laughs> you know. I mean, what? I mean, I was just depressed, and I was drinking a fucking bottle of whiskey. And I was sitting there by myself, and she comes over. What are you doing? How are you doing? I was like, please, just you know, please just stay away from me. Just go leave. You know, I I don't want to bother you. I don't want to mess with you. I just you know, I just want you to leave. You should maybe just get away from me. I'm I'm feeling really upset, down, depressed, whatever you want to call it. You know, I was just out. I was just out of my head, sad, fucking lonely, crazy psycho guy my girlfriend was inside i was just lost in my own life in my own mind i was drinking and i was standing there by myself out in the snow and uh and i i accidentally i said listen i said it over and over i said please just you know maybe just get away from me you know and i accidentally pushed her a little bit and she slipped on the ice and she fell down and i went oh shit oh fuck it and she went inside i guess she told jimmy that i punched her out <laughs> oh fuck Oh hell! And I would have. Oh and, no! And listen, I would have done the same if somebody told me that. 
but, but he came out, the door flew open, boom, he came flying out, Jones, I'm going to fucking kill you, <laughs> I'm not saying, and boom, he fucking started just wailing on me, just punching the living fucking shit out of my face, and yeah, he grabbed my head and started slamming in the back of a fucking car door and fucking, in the, and the trunk of a fucking car, he just started picking up my head and slamming my face into a car, trunk of a car and, and fucking go, what the fuck did you, I'm saying, what are you doing, what the fuck, you know, you know, and he goes, you don't touch my girlfriend, I never fucking touched her, what are you talking about, man, I was drunk out of my head, drunk. and then it was about two days later, I mean, I, I come in, I just got a split lip, a black eye, bloody nose, and I'm fucking, I showed up at band practice still, he showed up, we weren't talking, then I looked at him and he, he came over to me and goes, Evan, I'm sorry. She told me that you didn't punch her at all. <laughs> oh man! So, so he attacked me and beat the fuck out of my face, and yeah, it was pretty funny. Yeah, so, <laughs> <laughs> I could see that all. I could see the whole scenario play out in my head with that yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's life, right? And it's just, it's just shit happens. Mistakes happen, but yeah, that was about it. I mean. Mark and Brent were sort of like, they weren't into dope. They weren't into the drinking. So they were pretty peaceful sort of dudes. They had their girlfriends. And uh, so Jimmy had his girlfriend. I had my girlfriend. They were friends. And uh, Mark and Brent, they were twins, right? Same family, right? They're Mark and Brent Belke. And then they had two girlfriends that were really close, good friends. They ended up dating them. So there was like, whenever you saw those two girls, you'd see Mark and Brent. Where you say Mark and Brent, there was those two girls. <laughs> so, oh, you yeah. know, they, so it was the family. But then you'd see yeah. Kenny had Kenny was with nobody. And Kenny had no, nobody. And so we just accepted the fact. We didn't even think of the words gay. We never thought of the words, you know, homosexual. We never thought of the words, you know, at all, at all, that, you know, we never even thought of it. We just thought he was always just, that's just Kenny, whatever he wants. He's he's asexual, man. He does, doesn't give a shit. And, you know, it was always funny, though, because at parties, he was quite funny. We'd always, when we'd walk in, we'd go to parties, and, you know, everybody's always in the kitchen at parties, right? Because that's where the stove is, you know. And the fridge uh, full of beer. For, yeah, the stove for hot knife and, and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and the fridge full of beer, right? Yeah. So, so, oh, and, and the, yeah. So the cop, <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, so, oh, you know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, so you got, you got people that, are, yeah, everybody's in the kitchen at parties, man. So I remember I would go into a party and I see, I see Kenny, hey, Ken, how you doing? I put out my hand, like, hey, shake his hand, like, you know, because that's, that's who we are, you know, we're, we're still, we're still human beings. I put out my hand, like, he's my buddy, you know, hey, Ken, how you doing, man? And I put my hand out and he'd put his hand out and then he'd say, like, instead of shaking, hey, he'd scoop and he'd grab my crotch. <laughs> <laughs> he grabbed my balls yeah. and fucking squeezed as hard as he could. Oh. I go, you fuck! I'd be like, you fuck! I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> no, no. But the, but then we had, and then they punch him, and then that was it. And then he'd be laughing. That was fine. And the next person would come up. I uh, remember Warren would come up. Hey, can I do? Hey, Warren. Hey, and he go, hey, and he reach out to shake his hand. Grab his balls, all something. <laughs> then Warren would punch him in the face and fuck off. <laughs> and next, any 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 dude who would go, hey, Ken, how you doing? And the, oh, they, they they swivel because they knew that he'd be grabbing the crotch. And he'd, don't <laughs> yeah. don't don't go over the crotch grab, man. You he, he'll crush yeah. your nuts. <laughs> you gotta be wearing a jock strap around that guy, hey? Eh? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs>
all one the same. Purse this purse for one in the same. M I S F O R T U N E. Set M I S F O R T U N E. What was your first impression of Ken Chin? Like when you first met Kenny, like oh. how did you guys meet? Like what was oh, your okay. story I, behind that? You know, I know, I, I know, I told you mine, but I, I want to hear yours, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I met Kenny in seventy nine, nineteen seventy nine. I met Kenny. He went to Victoria Composite High School with the bass player of the band that I was in, the Uncolas. In 1979, uh, Jim. That's Alger. not a pop band, is it? <laughs> <laughs> the Uncolas. Yeah, they definitely weren't a pop band. No, they. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. And uh, but yeah, they went to school together, and uh, so Jim Alge and Ken Chin were friends from high school, and they ran a radio club in high school. I never went to high school, so I, like I said, I got grade seven. I never went to school. I don't know about any of this stuff, so I was playing in bands, but um. They were in the radio group or something like that at school. So they play through a uh, PA system, you know, radio shows and stuff like that during lunch or something like that. So Kenny and Jim were partners in that. There's about 10 kids or whatever that were involved. And so anyways, I would go to Jim Alge's place, which is downtown Edmonton. He lived at his mother's and uh, we'd go down to this amazing, big, huge, weird old dinosaur basement that was kind of creepy. It was wild. And uh, we'd be jamming, you know, playing Ramones and uh, Runaways and, uh, you know, Dead Boys and stuff. And then we hear a tap, tap, tap on the window. And, oh, oh hang on. And and that it'd be it would be Kenny tapping on the window. And yeah, he always wanted to come down the stairs in Jim Alge's basement to see what, what this band was. And that's how I met him. I never knew who this, this little Asian dude was. He was always sitting there reading comic books in the corner. Yeah, he's always reading comic books, sitting on the couch reading comics as we're jamming our versions of shitty shitty versions of <laughs> of Ramones and and Sex Pistols and Runaways and Dead Boys and shit. And he was sitting there reading comics. That's how I met Kenny. Yeah. And uh, What was yeah. your first interaction like with him, like, personally? It was a slow go because, you know, you, you meet somebody. But the thing is, though, a slow go me saying that, like, we knew that we're in. Meaning that if, if you're if you're friend of a friend and if you're looking like this and if you're dressed like that and you're fucked up, you know, then you're in. You could tell a person from a person, you know. What I mean, you can you can tell a you can tell a brother from another brother. If you if you're a person that you can tell that you're a freak, a misfit, that you know you you sniff some glue, you've hung out, you, and you listen to some you know groovy records, then yeah, you're an outsider. Especially then, yeah. the sniff and glue part. Yeah, big time, big time. <laughs> no, I've never actually big experienced time. that, but I heard it was uh, the the th the fun thing to do back then for a cheap high. We, we, well, yeah, when we were when we were young, we sniffed lots of glue, man. You know, but like not when we were in in the band necessarily, but but um, when we were like young, you know, like 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 little kids, you know, like like you know, like eleven, ten, eleven, you know, twelve years old, whatever, you know, I, you know, I was definitely, you know huffing on this and puffing on that and trying to get this and doing that and snorting this and, you know, getting getting going on all this shit. I was, yeah, I was already starting rock and roll in my brain, man. I was, you know, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah, so so him and me, him and me hit it off, no problem. Um, I knew that he was a dude that was a friend of, of Jim's, of Jim Alge. Don't want to get that confused with Jimmy Schmidt, but uh, Jim Alge. A great bass player, a great friend, a nice, nice, decent, smart man who's uh, now an author, and he lives in. Uh, he lived many years you know, in Thailand and written many books. I also had this one other question written. Yeah, um, I was gonna yeah. actually. Wa I wanted to ask about your tattoos oh, because, yeah. I, from my understanding, you were one of the first guys in Edmonton to start getting tattooed. And yeah. I'm pretty hundred percent sure and Kenny didn't have any tattoos, but I mean, nope. you were one of the only ones getting them back then. And I'm wondering how that came about and what your yeah, first that, tattoo was. Oh, and uh, I was oh, curious thanks. about that. You know, that's 
That's a great question because, you know what, I'll tell you, my first tattoo was about when, well, when I was in the band, SNFU, and my first my first tattoo was, I, I saw a gig poster on a pole downtown of one of our shows that we're going to be playing. I thought, man, that's a really great, because we used to have the S, N, and then the skull and crossbones. Right. F, U. And I went, fuck, that skull and crossbones, I can, it's an old uh, poison, you know what I mean, not, not the fucking band poison but <laughs> not that shit but i'm no like it's an old like a a warning a warning symbol for uh dangerous toxic equipment or whatever so it was a skull and crossbones that was used on lots of stuff for the stamp of of like you know stay away <laughs> or you're gonna be dead man you know and and so we went yeah that's cool okay skull and crossbones and uh you know i'm a bit of a pirate myself i've got pirate blood in me from whales and yeah so anyways the skull and crossbones was my first tattoo i tore the poster off of a pole downtown and went to an old there was only two tattoo parlors in fucking edmonton alberta canada at the time there was a place called Roy and Sharon's on 118th Avenue, which is a pretty downtrodden, you know, scoop de loop uh, place uh, where they, you know, tattoo cool. bar. Man. Where, but then you, where did you get the, the tattoo? Like on your you know, arm? Or? Yeah, I yeah. got it on my arm. Yeah. And I went, but this is a great story. I went into this place, and we. This is this is where you say that nowadays everybody's got tattoos, right? Everybody's got piercings, tattoos. All okay, great. Back then, hell no, man. Either you're a biker or a trucker or you're a military or you're a prostitute. You know, you're not going in to get tattooed unless you're a biker or a trucker or military or a prostitute. Okay. Now, if you go in to get a a tattoo and uh, you got a bit of a mohawk, I was the only guy in Edmonds and Alberta to have a fucking mohawk. I was the first guy to shave his head into a mohawk. I did that because of the movie Taxi Driver, Robert De Niro. I felt like the underdog, the God's lonely man, you know? That's where I did that, as a Travis Bickle. I felt aligned with him. I shaved my head into a mohawk. Yeah, that's my story. And I, then I tore this poster off to get the skull and crossbones on my arm. Went down into this tattoo parlor. And these biker guys were sort of like looking at me and said, get the fuck out of here, faggot. We don't tattoo fucking punk rock guys like you, man. Get out of here. And I was like, oh, okay. Hang on a second. I looked around. I saw what kind of beer they were drinking. And I smelt, I smelt some good weed. I went, okay. And I went down the street, bought a six pack of the same beer. I rolled a good joint that I had in my pocket. I went back in, plopped down a six pack and cracked one open. I said, here, take one. And I said, here, this is for you, man. I said, yeah, I still want to get this. Oh, fuck. Okay, come on in. Sit down. You're in. No way. <laughs> yeah, that's how yeah. I got in. Well, that, first, that uh, would have been like first. a way to actually break through to that for the for the rest of the that punks was, in the that, area. I imagine it was the yeah, it was the punks, yeah, the punks and the bikers and and the, you know, so you know, I I was all right. I mean, I was the first. Basically, I was probably one of the first. I don't want to keep saying this. I, I don't want to make it sound like I'm going. Well, nobody really believes it, but yeah. I'm being honest with you. If you were to go back in time and interview anybody and put the time together, you you won't be able to find it. Uh, I was the first to get my the mohawk and the first one getting tattooed here in Evanston, Alberta, Canada. And then other people saw me with that. And then I went back and got a couple more on my other arm, my initials and a rose and another skull with a... a snake cruising around eating the brains of it anyways but it was a little little tattoo it was small i couldn't afford anything it was like little tiny ones like you know back then you paid like 25 bucks for for a tattoo you know and 10 bucks for this and 20 bucks for that stuff like that like when i was 16 i got my first teardrop tattooed on my face man you can take that wherever you want it but hey listen i, I got it's a it's a more personal in-depth thing with me but uh yeah, I got that teardrop tattooed on my face when I was 16. So that sort of stood out a little bit. And uh, yeah, I got, and I got a little bird tattooed on the side of my skull when I shaved my head. And uh, yeah, so these biker guys were, 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 were all right with me. I was cool with them. Evan, where do you live in Edmonton these days? And, and what, what is <laughs> you this? Want, what? You, want my, you want my address? <laughs> <laughs> where can stop. we track you down? <laughs> stop, stop, damn it. <laughs> you, don't, you don't want to know where I live. <laughs> no, and, and, and no. 
what does what 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 this what, what does the city mean to you because you, you've been there your whole life yeah it's a unique place well, I live above the river. That's the thing, you know, here, just sort of like in British Columbia, you don't have any tornadoes because of the mountains. and You don't really have any floods. You know, there's no hurricanes. There's no earthquakes, that necessarily. But you know what I mean? It's like, same with here. If there's a flood here, I'm above where the river is. <laughs> so if there's a flood here, that's pretty nasty because I'm like, like above, way above the river. <laughs> well, speaking of a flood, your, yeah, your yeah, solo yeah. Oh, the song, flood. A Flood, <laughs> I wanted to play that song too so the, yeah. the, the people out there can hear your solo yeah. stuff you've done back then and everything. And Why don't you tell well, us that, about that song before we put it on, A Flood? Yeah, well, that would be wonderful. Uh, yeah, that was, uh, I, I wrote that, yeah, many years ago. I, I, uh, the connections that we all have with, with each other, I've had my ups and downs like we all do, but relationship situations. I, I'm very fortunate to have known some very wonderful, beautiful human beings in my life. And I've lost so many fucking people in this world. Over the years, I've lost easily. I, I can't even count. I've tried and I've come up to almost about maybe about 200 friends that are, that are all dead. And girlfriends and loved ones and people and just different situations, suicides, car crashes, overdoses, regular heart attacks, illnesses. A flood is like there's a, a flood in my life of so much loss. And I think in the song I say, you're my friend all the way. I think of you every day all that kind of stuff and it's like the flood never ends it's greetings that i send the flood seems to keep on never goes away that type of thing so yeah it's a very touching piece and it's a uh, heartfelt and it's true to this day actually and uh it's interesting that you brought that one up and it's nice that i sent that to you because it is it is something that is very personal and it still holds ground today because we all die man Unfortunately, it feels really hard, really very sad for all of us when we lose our loved ones. And uh, that's something that I, uh, last year, I lost three good friends last year. Uh, Kelly Simpson, uh, Kevin Person, and Kenny Chin, well, three good friends of mine. They, they all died within like a couple months uh, last year. And so that just sort of hit pretty hard for me. And uh, But anyways, here we are, 2021, and I'm sitting here talking with you guys nice guys so that's that's all right hmm. it's a flood hmm. there, yeah. there, there's a flood hard, man i'm sorry to hear that hmm. oh yeah. well it happens to all of us right we yeah, all gotta indeed. meet we all we all meet in the end you know
you know, that's the thing. I, I've I've always been very off with uh, the thought of death. Like meaning meaning like I've always been like so deep into like death, death, death that now I'm just like no, I'm now it's like okay, fine. I live every day like it's fine. I'm gonna die every day. Every day is fine. You know, I've become sort of like Zen. Uh, I have I, I sort of uh, get into mantras of the the now of uh, you know talk about tattoos. I've got now tattooed all over me because I am now one now. Speaking of now, now you have lots of tattoos and you got a collection of those. And also, from what I understand, you have a beautiful collection of guitars. I was going to yeah. ask if you wanted to talk about those at all. <laughs> you're you're going to ask if you want if you, if you want to trade a couple? I see uh, you got a couple of groovy ones too. Well, man. I fall in love pretty easily. Let's, <laughs> yeah, let's not talk I, about Evan that. Evan has a problem. Yeah, Evan has a problem. We're, we're, we're dealing I with know. it <laughs> I know. We're yeah, all addicted. It's a tough we're world, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> we're all ad- addicted to the beauty of of rock and roll beautiful guitars man. yes i know we i don't are. <laughs> that, that, that picture yeah. of that one that you sent me of that that green sg Evan, I, tell you. <laughs> I thought we talked about this <laughs> oh. yes yeah no and I, yeah we'll touch yeah. on that more later maybe but uh, <laughs> Sorry, sorry so, to bring that up. It's all good. It's man. a soft spot. It's all good. It's a it's a soft spot for me. And uh, you know, there's there's tons in this world, and everyone has their time and place. You know. Yeah. <laughs> no it's words, a, man. I know, it's, I know it's a soft. I know it's a soft spot. I'm sorry, man. I know you I do. I, I didn't mean. To, I, didn't mean to, I didn't mean to crack that, that egg. It's man. not that's your like guitar. A, We've talked about. A, yeah, that's, that. Yeah. So a hard I, one, my man. buddy helped me fix uh, my my vehicle a little bit and i told him i'd scope out a guitar for him and yeah. uh, and i found this you know the one i say the this beautiful looking uh green sg with the wood yeah. finish coming out and so I, I went to uh, pitched in for it and everything and helped him pick it up then i was like right when i held it in my hands and played it i was like oh like man would you be willing to do a trade someday like maybe oh, yeah. i can find oh, another yeah. one you know <laughs> you know the yeah. pain but i mean it's uh you know something i'm, well, I'm no, coping no. with ever since yeah uh, it just yesterday well, no. well, so so he's the one that's holding it. He's yeah, the one that's yeah. holding. And he's he's oh, a good friend of uh, actually uh, yeah a good friend of mine that I grew oh, up with and everything. So I'll, I'll, we're gonna have some guitar jams and stuff. Uh, you're gonna have to yeah you'll 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 end up you never know you might end up actually grabbing that thing man. Well, you know, it's yeah, kinda, I know it's kind of like you know uh, finding <laughs> the woman of your dreams and uh, knowing that she's yeah. living at your friend's house you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, well, I don't know about that, okay, man. Okay, well, maybe not that. I don't maybe know I should that. edit some of this out. Maybe not. It's kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, no. But, yeah, no, I don't know about that. Because, that, yeah, no, we've all been there, too, man. That's the hard one, man. I, <laughs> I, I, I don't oh, know man. if I can I don't know if I can talk about that. I man. think I like guitars more than humans, though. So. Yeah, guitars are, <laughs> the guitars are easier when they're out of tune, man. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Nah, we're us human beings when we're out of tune, man. You know, you know, hey, guitars I can handle. Yeah, uh, you they're know. easier to tune than humans. Uh, big time, <laughs> better, better, to, better yeah. to. And and they're nicer. They're nicer to hold on to. And you know, and yeah. they're and they're, and, they never walk and, off and, on you, really. <laughs> no, no. And they're good. Good when you're and when you're laying in bed. It, the only thing is when you roll over and the and the tuning peg gets stuck in your eyeball. <laughs> 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 That's happened to me a few times. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I tell you, I passed out playing guitar and I've, I've 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 woken up with 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 holes in my head, man. I fucking I I literally fell into my guitars. Oh. I laid I laid it passed out. This is a few years back, but I passed out. You know, I don't drink any al- alcohol anymore. But when I did, man, I, I'd fall over into my guitars. Holy crap. I, 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 I passed out. I'd be laying there. And I wake up and I'm like, what the, where am I? And I'm, I'm like, oh no. <laughs> and I look, and there's like, there's like broken guitar pieces and, and, and like, oh, tuning. Wow. there's like, there's like, there's like pieces of guitar like snapped and broken and like chunks sticking in my skin and I'm like oh, what the fuck blood, blood all over the fucking floor and I'm going what the hell is going on so well they yeah. make great instruments to play great companions but I don't know if they make the greatest teddy bears <laughs> You know, you can cuddle with them, but, you know, I mean, to yeah. roll over on one of those bad boys and a string snapping in your nuts, that might not be the most pleasant way to, 
to share space with a guitar, man. But, uh, but it I happens. love you. I love you. That's 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 fantastic. Yeah, no, that's true. Yeah, but, <laughs> right. yeah you're right. right. At no, you, man. Yeah. Guitars, guitars, guitars are great, but they don't. They don't make great teddy bears. No, they. <laughs> <laughs> I got to write a song yeah. about that one. Yeah, right? might Jeez. as well make it a children's song about the teddy bear. Hey. There was not yeah. a teddy bear. It was a beautiful <laughs> guitar that hit me in the face, yeah. broke my nose. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good, good, good times. Yeah, yeah. You push pause. <laughs> yeah, and that'll be that'll be like Santa Claus, and it'll be like a guitar shaped like a teddy bear, but it's like. <laughs> Like nasty, like come and come and bite you, you know. Holy yeah. shit! <laughs> a guitar that's oh. like with teddy bear fur. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, a fuzzy, a fuzzy teddy bear guitar, but yeah. like got claws on it. It's like nasty, you know. It's like, yeah, the pickups no. are like eyeballs. The, the oh yeah, the mouth oh, is another yeah. pickup. Yeah, nose in there somewhere. Yep. That's, yeah. That's, and, and yeah. Then, yeah, and then the neck. Yeah, it's like the arm, and then there's the claw at the top <laughs> where the tip. Yeah. Oh man! Wow. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we're having fun work. over here. I think. I think that's. Yeah. I think. <laughs> I think that's what I'm gonna start making now. Oh. And I have to. Gonna find myself some some stuffed little teddy bears and like make <laughs> make a get make yeah. make glue them onto a guitar. Or that, that will awesome. be the next best thing. And, I, uh, I do, I yeah. do like making some weird art, but I mean that would be cool. But I do, uh, yeah, maybe I'll make a, maybe a teddy bear guitar. I mean, fuck, holy shit! Yeah. Well, you kind of have to now. <laughs> oh, now, 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 now it's yeah. a done deal. Yeah, it's yeah. A teddy, teddy bear electric guitar. I'll have to grab one of those yeah. too. Yeah, I think they, I think that would come true. Yeah. I think that'll happen. <laughs> yeah. The more I talk about it, it, it'll make me make me think. Hmm, <laughs> let me see here. That's too. That's too groovy. No, I might hurt myself. Mm-hmm. Hang on. No, no, no. It might be comfortable. Hang on. No, I'm gonna hurt myself. No, it's gonna be comfortable. No, damn it, I'm gonna kill myself. Oh my god, <laughs> it's gonna be lovely. <laughs> yes. <laughs> How many guitars oh. do you got over there? I've got. I got. I don't know. I don't want to say because I, I don't, you don't know my address. Well, <laughs> well I was going to say can't. like, well, at least well, we didn't mention do. your address. So yeah. no, 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 don't, no, yeah. don't mention my, no, no. But uh, I've got about, I've got about thirty guitars. Whoa. Okay. And next question: What's your address? <laughs> 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 no, hey, listen, uh, I've got, I've, I've still, I've still got the original drum kit. Yeah. Wow. I've still got my original drum kit. Well, if it's I back nineteen seventy nine Baxter. Baxter drum kit, Whoa. and uh, I I I redid it. I shaved all the hardware off it, and took it apart and repainted it white with like dripping neon paint all over it. And then I'm I have a practice room that's all like black lights, so Sweet. it's like white white with neon dripping paint all over the, my drums. Oh, I'd love and to see I'll, that. I'll, I'll, I'll send you some pictures cool. of it, man. Yeah. 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 I'll, I'll get it on the, the podcast here. Yeah, you bet. Oh, yeah. yeah. Be- and if that's, I- my, that's my old original yeah, 1979 uh, Baxter drum kit. It, it, wow. It, it, it was on many recordings. Uh, it's not the best drum kit in the world, but hell. It's not the drum kit; it's the player. Hmm. <laughs> well, you know, if, it's, uh, yeah, it's I, the, yeah, it's the dr- the drummer is the transmission of the engine, man. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you know the bones. If you don't to have the body. that rhythm. If you don't have that rhythm section, man, you're dead. Yeah. You know, if any rock and roll band out there, you can have the great, great, great lead singer, a great guitar player, a great bass player, a great keyboard player, and then you get a shitty drummer, the whole band sucks. Then you get a shitty lead singer, a shitty guitar player, a shitty bass player, and a great drummer, you got a fucking cool rock and roll band. And that's what SNFQ was. You know, I don't really yeah. say that kind of shit about myself, but God damn it, I might as well. Yeah, you guys came a long ways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, it was worth it. And uh, listen, you know, every every beer bottle across the head or any punch on the face, <laughs> and, you know, I I'll take it again just to be able to hug everybody and and say I love you, I love you, I love you, because 
I would never change a damn thing. I am so proud of what we did. I'm so proud of what we gave to this world. And I am so proud to be who the fuck I am. And it's nice to talk to you guys 1,000%. Definitely, man. I couldn't agree with you more. And uh, yeah, I gotta get over to Edmonton someday, and uh, yeah. we gotta jam, man, and hang out, you know. And yeah. uh, who knows what else? But yeah, it was it was a total pleasure talking to you, Evan. Oh. Uh, always, man. And we gotta do this again too, you know. Oh, like uh, we'll have to do a follow a, up one too. Yeah, so, it's been I mean, a pleasure. you're a great storyteller, and I, I really it's, enjoy talking with well, you. Well, I appreciate it more than anything, you know. Like you're my friends, man, and uh, I I love you very much. I thank you so course, much man, for, be, for being who you are. And for being where you are and for being with me now means everything to me. So I thank you so uh, thank you. very, thank very you. much. Thank you. Thanks, brother thank Evan. You. Man, love yeah. you too. And uh, yeah, keep in touch and all that stuff, of course. You bet. Actually, yeah. I should say, Evan, I started my radio show in Edmonton. I lived there for a while and I did oh, my show at C- right. CJSR. I did yeah. my show oh, there. Oh, CJSR. Oh, shit. Well, that's where we first recorded um, Life of a Bag Lady. Uh, Life of a Bag Lady, This is the End. That's the, that, yeah, that's, that's the first the very one, right? fir- very first single we, we did was at CGSR Studios that on a wow. four track on a four track man yeah it's like a Tascam uh, oh, real to like, real a real to real it, oh real to real yeah yeah wow yeah. Well, I can picture I can picture that studio right yeah now. yeah that's so and it cool. was it, yeah and then and it was great I mean that was fa- fantastic we had a bass player that came in his name was Scott Alloy and uh, he was a bass player a great nice nice guy he was a great bass player but that was one between bass players Warren Bidlock left and uh, carried on drinking and driving his van and uh, he was you know he's he was he is my one of my best friends for sure and I uh, don't know where he is now he's MIA but uh, Scott Alloy he used to play with a band called the Malibu Kens and he was great. He came in, learned a song, A Life of a Bag Lady, and then slash, This is the End. Now, that song wasn't on the first album, but the song, This is the End, is on the first album. A re-recording, uh, I, though, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And now, you know, but the, I tell you, the mix and the way it was done of that single, I tell you, if you can hear that, you, you've got it. I sent you a, a disc, I think, hey? Yeah, was, yeah, yeah. So that, that would it, be the version that's okay. on that. Yeah, the first. Yeah, when you hear the first one, Whoa. that's like yeah, that's straight off of the vinyl off of the forty-five hey, that well, I got. Well, in that yeah. case, let's let's end it on that. We'll, okay. we'll get the song in there. Right uh, on. Life of a Bag Lady with this is the end because it transitions into that song, right? Yep, you bet. Yeah, one, Life two, of a Bag S-N-F-U. Lady. <laughs> yeah, this is the end. Yeah. One two S N F U forever, forever and ever. Forever and Evan. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> Always and forever. Evan from Evan. Evan to Evan from Evan. <laughs> yep. Peace and love. Well, thanks, awesome, Evan. Man. Cool. Oh. So if you want to drop your address, I mean, we can post it and then <laughs> I had to throw that in That's one it. more time. That's yeah. it. That's it. Yeah. I'm going to I'm gonna come there and I'm going to kill you. I'm going I'm to gonna smash a beer bottle across your head. I'm going gonna... <laughs> to kick sand at you. <laughs> ah, I got to kick sand in my face. He's looking at the back of a cop. That's what he was thinking the whole time when he's reading the back of those yeah. comic books, you know? He's, you know, that those little uh, kick the sand in the face. Uh, the, 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 he was you know, plotting mus- it this whole time. Yeah, yeah. The mu- the muscle the muscle guy on the beach, you know. You know, don't let anybody <laughs> kick sand in your face ever again. Yeah. You know, you know, learn learn to grow muscles and and oh, fucking yeah. hell, he was he was kicking sand in my face. I thought, <laughs> God damn that little character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I uh, I love him forever. Yeah, I, I I would take a thousand more bottles in the head just to fucking hug them again man i'll be with them again we'll all be with each other we'll all be with each other i'll say that how about that sounds good man and we'll, we'll be here good. and we're always all together you know so yep. yeah you bet it's good yeah, it was a, it was a 1000 percent pleasure chatting with both you matt you yeah. too evan man. i love you both man thank you very very much thank you too thank man you. Bye-bye. much love to you